Hello and welcome. This is part two of our uh, segment on religion and its importance and influence in the Second World War. Our first uh, segment was on Nazism and its connections to the occult and its planned war against Christianity. Uh, this is going to be on Christianity and the Christian resistance to Nazism. As we discussed in the last video, this is a rather jarring reinterpretation of the events of the Second World War. The mainstream history usually likes to approach uh, modern history through the lens of uh, political machinations, right? Um, while we're going to be taking a look at it through religion, uh, through the eyes of religion, and we get a very different uh, idea of what's occurring here uh, simply by looking at it in a different way. The Nazis are going to be planning to eradicate Christianity. They see it as a, a hindrance uh, to their malevolent plans. Uh, hatred from, for the Jew has quickly grown into hatred for the Christian, right? Uh, Deputy Fuhrer uh, Martin Bormann stated that Christianity and Nazism were completely incompatible because the Christian religion originated from Judaism. Heinrich Himmler believed the principle of Christian mercy to be a hindrance to the planned war with the subhumans. The, as the leader of the SS, he believed that the primary duty of the SS was acting as the vanguard in overcoming Christianity and restoring a Germanic way of living. When referring to Jews and Christians, he stated, we've already removed one of these powers, at least from Germany. The time will come to settle accounts with the other after the war. Then we'll unfrock these priests. Neither God nor their Virgin Mary will be able to do anything for them. By 1937, Adolf Hitler himself um, was claiming Christianity to be the most horrible institution imaginable and one ripe for destruction. It was... A plan would is put in place by uh, by the uh, under orders of Hitler. Uh, the plan was created by uh, Alfred Rosenberg for the elimination of Christianity. It it called for the cross to be removed from all churches and replaced with the swastika. All Bibles and saints were to be removed from altars. Um, mein Kampf was to take its place um, on the altars as the foremost of ethics. Priests and pastors would be replaced by national Third Reich orators, and above all, Christianity was to be exterminated. The Nazi plans to eliminate Christianity had been occurring for some time within Germany. Many outspoken priests and Christians um, had been killed, and by 1936, all crucifixes were removed from German schools. Above all, the Nazis were succeeding in turning the masses against Christianity. In one mass demonstration in 1938 in Vienna, a crowd um, of over 200,000 people attacked the cathedral in Vienna, um, and the crowd chanted and demanded the deaths of the priests and the clergy there. Violence on the streets against Christians um, and other attacks on Christians occurred frequently. In fact, it was very common for school children, uh, Hitler Youth is what they were called at the time, but school children were encouraged to spy, to go to church, to spy on everyone there and report back to Nazi authorities. They were using children to spy on the churches um, as well as certain individuals who were Christians, right? And the children would tell on them if they, if they said anything, anything denouncing uh, the Third Reich, uh, the the elimination of Jews, etc., or or of the handicap. Um, those are going to be some of the first to go. Are, are going to be handicapped people, and the Christian Church is going to be very upset about this. Um, <clears throat> when we have, we think of the area sophist, right? The, the if you watch our first video, you'll learn more about about that. But um, they've invented something called positive Christianity. Um, Liebenfels did. And basically, positive Christianity was a way of turning a Christian into an area sophist, right, without them even realizing it. Um, but uh, it allowed them to keep their, their label as Christian 
while actually giving them the exact same objectives as the Nazis were, right? The Third Reich. It, um, Jesus was a blonde haired German in this version of Christianity. Um, and of course, you know, he was killed by the Jews, the real enemy of, all right, of, of um, Germany. It, it also taught that Christ's disciple Paul had corrupted the teachings of Jesus and that all forms of Christianity other than, Christ, than positive Christianity, right, this new version they had created, was devil worship. They held that the Apostles' Creed was false and that the, the divinity of Jesus was irrelevant um, because... And, and we'll quote them here because the fearer is the herald of the new revelation as in he is the second coming of Jesus in, in this instance um, so any other group of Protestants of Catholics um, Jehovah's Witnesses they're all going to be the enemies right of positive Christianity or what is effectively area Sophia Nazism um, the Nazis had savored making Christendom their enemy since the beginning, but they had underestimated just how influential of an enemy they were making, and they perhaps had failed to quantify properly the power of that Christian influence upon the Allied war effort. With full knowledge right, of the occult and demonic inclinations of the Third Reich, Christian world leaders pounced to demonize them for this and would make as many who would be willing to listen aware that they were not just fighting a political enemy but a vanguard of evil. In Germany, Christians had been a, a thorn in the side of the Nazis since the beginning. They had protested, they had denounced, or even attempted to intervene against Nazi injustices. Um, the removal and execution of Jehovah's Witnesses in the early 1930s sent both Catholics and Protestants into a fury. The subsequent denunciations meant the elimination of many Christian priests and ministers who denounced them from the pulpit, um, which in turn actually only served to stoke the, the fire of the Christian resistance. Most importantly, Christians were very aware of, of Nazi connections to witchcraft, the occult, demonic, um, etc. It, it, from the very beginning of the Nazi administration, Christians had been warning of Nazi connections to the occult, right? So they, they knew who these supposed witches were, who these, who these pagan occultists were. And, uh, you, you know, they were, they were very aware of it. And they were very aware that these people were being appointed to leadership positions within the Nazi party. And they weren't happy about it. Alfred Rosenberg, the, the writer of the, uh, the book, The Myth of the 20th Century, had lar long argued for the return of paganism and blood sacrifice of subhumans. The Vatican immediately denounced his appointment as a leader in the Nazi administration. Um... And if they had not made this, this doesn't make it clear, their feelings on it, Rosenberg's visit to London um, it probably will. It, he visits London in 1934. Rosenberg presented a swastika embroidered in a leaf uh, in a wreath to the British Parliament as a symbol of peace. They knew exactly who and what Rosenberg was, and a Catholic member of Parliament broke the wreath in half and threw it out into the River Thames. And rather Thames, right? We get the idea that they know what's happening here. Renowned Belgian journalist Pierre von Passan berated Nazism as the old pagan demon which the Christian Middle Ages sought to exercise and drive out forever. German nationalism today is a revolt against Christianity in its broadest as well as in its deepest sense. Meanwhile, beyond um, and even within Germany, Christian opposition to the Nazis was proliferating. German Catholics living in exile in France exposed the Nazi pagan connections and their culture conf newsletters beginning in 1936. They called Nazism a return to paganism. They denounced and exposed the pagan rituals occurring um, at Hitler youth camps and the violent campaigns being waged against Christians in Germany. 
Pope Pius XI um, denounced and outed Hitler and Nazism as evil pagans in a scathing rebuke, uh, rebuke in 1937 encyclical. Whoever follows that so-called pre-Christian Germanic concept of substituting a dark and impersonal, de uh, Im impersonal destiny for the personal God denies, therefore, the wisdom and the providence of God. Okay, so not only is Pius declaring here that Nazism is a pagan cult, but further addresses the brooding conflict between the two religions. The church of God is despised and hated maliciously by those who shut their eyes to the light of Christian wisdom and, and miserably return to the teachings, customs, and practices of ancient paganism. Pius then turns to rebuke Hitler. Should any man dare in sacrilegious disregard of the essential differences between God and his creature, between the God-man and the children of man, to place a mortal where he the greatest of all times, by the side of, or over, or against Christ, he would deserve to be called a prophet of nothingness. The, the Pope closes this speech in a solemn warning to Nazism. The enemies of the church who think their, that their time has come will see that their joy was premature and that they may close the grave they had dug. He's making a threat against Nazism here. <clears throat> so, <laughs> the Pope has denounced Nazism. He has outed Hitler and the Nazis as a bunch of crazed pagans. Um, and there's going to be repercussions in Germany. Um, in order to get this message out, this encyclical message out to the masses in Germany, the Vatican and Christian printing presses published over 300 copies of this, 300,000 copies of this letter that were distributed across Germany. This is going to have enormous consequences, though. In a rage, Hitler sh immediately shut down all Christian printing presses and abducted thousands of priests and convicted them on charges of corruption of the youth. Most of these priests, they're never seen again. Don't know where they go. I would assume they died. So the Vatican had learned that denouncing Nazism had consequences. Uh, Pius actually wrote in a letter to the Int Italian ambassador, we would like to utter words of fire against such actions uh, and German atrocities. And the only thing restraining us from speaking is the fear of making the plight of the victims even worse. So public scorning of Nazism, at least for the Vatican, had time and time again proved deadly, had de deadly ramifications for Christians living in Germany or in German-occupied territory. Denunciation was quickly replaced by substantial clandestine action. The Vatican, despite its compromised position during the war, sought to repulse and subvert the Germanic nightmare um, and the sadistic SS at every opportunity available. The churches of Europe worked tirelessly to form an underground railroad, if you will, to rescue and smuggle Jews and other targeted minorities out of Nazi-occupied territory. The churches and even the Vatican itself would provide sanctuary for Jews during the war. It is estimated that nearly a million Jews were saved by the Catholic Church during the Second World War. But the Vatican looked beyond its mission, right, of saving innocent lives and actually sought to take a life, one life, that being Adolf Hitler. Okay, tyrannicide, an ancient concept, Catholic concept, in which murder was not sinful, but rather an action of imperium, right, of God, um, was, and this was deemed not only necessary, but a just and righteous course in the case of the leader of the Third Reich, right? So the idea is tyrannicide, if we kill the tyrant, we, we do more good than bad, even though murder is a sin. In this case, this fellow is so bad, murder is actually a good thing, right? That's, that's how what I would explain tyrannicide in, in Catholic thinking. And so they have determined that, right, Hitler is uh, someone who needs to be taken out, as in assassinated. So for the first time, 
since the Crusades, right? The Vatican is at war. Christendom is at war. Um, but despite retaining or perhaps gaining a moral supremacy, their, their capacity for military action had long faded away, right? Um, there was no knights, right? There are no crusaders. They don't really have assassins or hitmen. And so they're, what they're going to be doing since they've lost their capacity for violence is they would have to seek to kill Hitler and turn the course of the war via clandestine means, right? Operationally, this would mean coordinating with members of the Catholic German resistance to achieve a successful assassination. The Vatican would make three attempts to take the life of Adolf Hitler. Unfortunately, like the other 40 so odd attempts to kill Hitler by primarily Christian groups, all would end in failure. The failure did not to kill Hitler did not stop the Vatican from attempting to turn the tide of the war in the Allies' favor. Uh, Pope Pius XII routinely summoned Joseph Mueller of the German resistance, dubbed Agent X by the Vatican, for information that might help the British war effort. Pius XII would also continue his predecessor's denunciations of Nazism and would warn the Allies of the Nazis' invasion uh, plan to invade the Netherlands. Adolf Hitler, knowing full well that the Vatican was attempting to thwart his plans of world domination, made his own plan titled Robot Fawn, which, if it had come to fruition, would have seen the SS 8th Cavalry Division assassinate the Pope and every last cardinal in the Vatican. Now, outside the Vatican, Louis Spence, an expert in the occult and mythology, was one of the first Englishmen in 1940 to push the connection between the Nazis and witchcraft and demonic, in the demonic into the public conscience. Well aware that, that of the connections between the Nazis and demonic, a German Christian student organization by the name of the White Rose is going to poignantly lambast Hitler on many occasions. Um, and this particular one, this is going to be written by the 21-year-old Sophie Scholl. When he uses the name the Almighty, he means the power of evil, the fallen angel, Satan. His mouth is the sm foul-smelling maw of hell, and his might is at, is at bottom accursed. True, we must conduct a struggle against the national socialist terrorist state with rational means, but whoever today still doubts the reality, the existence of demonic powers, has failed by a wide margin to understand the metaphysical background of this war. Behind the concrete, the visible events, behind all objective, logical considerations, we find the irrational element, the struggle against the demon, against the servants of the Antichrist. Okay. Sophie Scholl is leader of this Catholic resistance, is calling Hitler a demon and an Antichrist. I don't know how far off she is, right? <laughs> <coughs> the poor young lady <coughs> for publishing this leaflet and others like it would be captured by the Nazis and publicly beheaded uh, by guillotine. If you're curious of what a hero is, it's somebody like Sophie Scholl. She didn't go along with right, the, the Nazis' plans. She didn't sign up to uh, serve in the military, to serve her country, to serve the Nazis. She actively spoke out against it. And that's what a true German hero during this time looks like. It wasn't Erwin Rommel, right? It's, it's not any of these other uh, German military figures. It's it's this young girl here who was who was a real German hero during that war. Uh, and I have immense respect for her. She's one of my, um, I think, one of my favorite people. An excellent, an excellent um, uh, representation of the bravery of women, right? Because so many of these men, you know, tough guys, they're um, they're signing up and they're participating in. Um, 
you know, Nazism and, and the evil that it will do and the lives it will take. And uh, here's this little girl who actually has the courage to speak out against it, right? When so many didn't. <clears throat> Outside of Germany, the Christian uh, demonization of the Nazis evolved from protest to a mighty roar. The Archbishop Arthur Hensley addressed the British military in a broadcast. You are on the side of the angels in the struggle against the pride of the rebellious Lucifer. You are resisting the onslaught of brutal violence directed against the Christian values on which European civilization was founded. Right? So these Christians, right, they know about the pagan and occult connections um, with Nazism and they are fully demonizing them at this point um, in order to turn the war effort here and to rile up the masses. <clears throat> Anglican Bishop W.G. Whittingham would echo the same view. We are not fighting flesh and blood, but the devil in the persons of Hitler and his gang. Wilhelmin Wilhelmina, Queen of the Netherlands, in a radio broadcast to her nation, would state that the war... Um, is a war between God and the conscience and the powers of darkness. All right. By 1940, the true nature of the Nazi regime had become quite simply undeniable. British author Lewis Spence would publish both a monogram and a book, uh, monograph and a book in this year titled "The Occult Causes of the Present War," in which he would expose the connections between the Nazi Party and the demonic, and he would also make up a bunch of stuff as well. Spence would proclaim to the British public that Hitler's mentality is under the influence of Satanism is evident, and he remains steadfast in his belief that the current war was caused by the influences of Luciferian powers upon the Nazi regime. The Nazi, as we can see, right, the Nazi flirtation with the occult, with the demonic, and its plan to eliminate Christians was a trifecta for Christianity in terms of things you should not do, and it is not going to be without severe consequence for the Third Reich. Not only did it create an even more voracious uh, British war machine, um, and a war machine for the Western allies involved in the war, but it deeply affected Americans as well. In 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt in a surprise announcement, claimed he had acquired the secret documents that showed Hitler's 30-point plan for the destruction of Christianity. That, that is the plan that was commissioned that we, was written by Rosenberg we talked about earlier. But, but if Roosevelt announces this on the radio and in a speech, claiming he had acquired these secret documents that showed Hitler's plan to destroy Christianity. He stated the Nazis' aim was to abolish all existing religions, Catholic, Protestant, Mohammedan, Hindu, Buddhist, and Jewish alike, so that the, blood, the God of blood and iron will take the place of the God of love and mercy. This revelation would actually cause him to extend the Lindley's program to the Soviet Union. All right? He didn't like, you know that the Soviet Union was atheist, right? He didn't trust them. Um, but here, finding out about the German plan to destroy Christianity has moved him so much to realize the ramifications if Germany was to win the war um, that he is going to, to give the communists aid in, in the war effort. Aid and, obviously, um, military assistance. He's going to state that we stand ready in the defense of our nation and in the faith of our fathers to do what God has given us the power to see as our full duty. All right. So all of this, I, all of this isolationism going on at the time, um, the day before the USS Kearney, uh, an American destroyer, was sunk right, by, by Ger the Germans and many Americans died. That wasn't enough to move him. That didn't move him enough to get him to send aid to the Soviets. Instead, it was the revelation of Nazi religion uh, plans to destroy Christianity that got him to give aid to the Soviets. 
Many Americans, though, were not so slow to embrace the idea of conflict, especially once the link of the demonic and of Nazism had been established. With the Christian world order on its knees and only America unblemished by the Nazis, it seemed to many American Christians that this was the end. Fundamentalism, fundamentalism blossomed into the mainstream. Hitler was believed to be the anti Antichrist amongst fundamentalists. Um, a fulfillment of the end times and the realization of many of the prophecies of Revelations. This infectious belief consumed many Americans. Brigadier General Eric Fisher Wood declared Hitler to be the Antichrist. Fundamentalist Christian leader Frank Norris would actually become instrumental in drumming up public pressure upon the government to step up its role in the war. By 1939, Norris decreed that Hitler was Satan incarnate and that war was inevitable. He would cite his primary goal as to arouse Americans to the Nazi dangers. Linking the war effort as a war against the devil, he successfully encouraged many um, Christians to invest heavily in the purchasing of war bonds. At his Texas church, Norris would even burn a Nazi flag in, in, in demonstration and then begin applying pressure on the government to dramatically increase military aid to the Allies. His calls were so effective that Roosevelt's son, Elliot Roosevelt, would join him in the pulpit of his church as a representative of the administration for a defense rally. Christianity, it was clear, was having a tremendous influence on the Allied war effort. And <laughs> one of the few times you know, we can thank fundamentalism for something um, because it is going to help the Allies win this war. An examination of the evidence reveals that the Nazi beliefs in the occult were fueling the political party's actions, right? From their euthanization of the Jews, uh, of the handicap, to their attempts to destroy Christianity, right? While their belief that they were in the master race spurred them to initiate the Second World War. Everything done by the German government, every insidious action under, undertaking, corresponds to these nefarious religious beliefs of Ariosophy and the mythology that they embraced. Lons Liebenfels, the, the, one of the founders of Ariosophy and the cult of Astara, would even state that the swastika and the fascist movements are offspring of Astara. The steadfast belief in the purity of the German blood and the need to eradicate and subjugate all other persons meant that things like capitalism, like fascism, like communism, they were all irrelevant, and it meant more importantly that peace was impossible. The Second World War is not a tale of opposing religious beliefs or of unbridled nationalism alone. It is about the rise of a religion that by its tenets cannot coexist with any other religion, one whose only possibility is war and genocide. Most importantly, Nazism was unequivocally the opposite of Christianity, right? This is, of course, partly geographical coincidence, um, yet it ensured that in this war, everybody the Nazis would be fighting would be a Christian country, right? To European and American Christians, Nazism marked a return to the ancient world, as if time had come full circle, and civilization itself and all the progress was now being challenged by an evil Christian nations had long thought themselves rid of, right? And their mind, the witches had returned. In their mind, the demonic had returned. And the mind, in reality, the old ways of barbarity had returned mass human sacrifice and genocide to the world. This new nationalistic religion based on blood purity would threaten the world of the Abrahamic religions not with conversion, but with destruction. Despite the fact that all the Nazi affiliations with witchcraft and the demonic ha having been largely erased from the modern narrative of the war, those religious constructs played an immense role in the story of the war when it was happening, as we can see um, the testimony of all these individuals. At its heart, the Second World War was not just a political conflict, but a religious one. A new fanatical religion had emerged that offered no quarter, 
but battled with the Christian world order to decide the fate of the future war. Excuse me, of the future world. <laughs> um, so yes, the fate of the future world was determined by the battle between this strange and terrible new religion and, and its battle with, with Christianity. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Obviously, it goes without saying that that uh, the <laughs> you know even though we often and everybody kind of refers to what Nazism, the theological ideas of Nazism as pagan, even though everybody does that, it, it's not really fair to equate it to a pagan religion, even though technically it is because it, it's so it's such an abomination un completely unfamiliar with with any European pagan religion, I'll say that at least. There's there's similarities between worship of Moloch and Baal in, in the Middle East. Um, uh, but um, this this is so far and away not pagan. It, it, they took the root uh, of it, which was Norse paganism, and then mutated it into, to a horrific chimera of human evil, right? Um, it is an abomination. It is not uh, so much a, a pagan religion as an abomination. And a war and, and a, a cult just really just built on evil, right? Um, but yes, uh, Christianity did play a very important part in stopping Nazism, and uh, which is very interesting. Um, you know, this is one of the few, t one of the first times in history we can say that hey, Christianity did a good thing, right? They they were on the they were on the right side in this instance, um, so that's good, right? Because uh, we've had to be pointing out uh, bad things Christianity has done in the past through our series on magic, and, and so it's nice to be able to point out finally be able to point out one of the good things uh, they contributed um, to humanity as well. Uh, if you haven't seen the first video on this, the connection between the Nazi and the occult, the Nazis and the occult, uh, please do. Uh, it, it is worth a watch, and we'll give you a lot of context for this video. Um, obviously, you haven't seen our other stuff. I recommend checking that out as well. We do lots on magic and and, and the occult and its uh, interaction with religion. I am hoping to do... The next video, I think, will be of evil black magic in the modern period um but i'm really hoping to do an interview with someone who practices who is a modern pagan and, and a practitioner of magic to give us an idea of general uh, you know the general practices and, and magical beliefs in the modern period uh, and it will kind of give us an idea uh, of how closely that relates to ideas on magic um in the ancient period and we'll be able to kind of look at and compare the two Hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had uh, fun making it. I did my, um, I actually was taking an American class at the time and I had to write my, my thesis on something in American history. And I was researching things and I, I ran across this, what was occurring in Germany um, in terms of occult connections. And, and I brought it up to my teacher and she agreed. She said, "You don't have. It, you know what? What you're focusing on is so great. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be on the United States. You you go with this." So I I am very grateful to her for allowing me to do that. But it just shows you how interesting this topic was and and how important it was. Uh, and I certainly felt like while researching this stuff that it it was an important thing I was doing. I felt, certainly felt motivated. It was very hard to research all this stuff. It took many 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 months. Um, including some <laughs> translation work as well. And it, it was not easy because the find evidence because, you know, the German government had destroyed so much both during the war and after the war, um, even once the Nazis were out of power. I guess they wanted to kind of save themselves further humiliation in a lot of ways. Um, so it was a tough st thing to track a lot of this stuff down, especially when it comes to connect occult connections. Um, there's still so much we don't know, right, that we'll never know. Uh, we don't know what went on in the Thule cult. We don't know what it went on the Germ German Orden uh, or Astara. 
we don't know many of the magical practices employed other than right other than seances and contact and the dead and stuff basic stuff um and um the like so uh an interesting topic to research um this is a lot of stuff that i know it is not commonly taught this is going to seem like probably to some of you like an alternate reality and it certainly felt that way to me while i was researching this stuff my mind was just bought blown my mind was completely blown uh like what the nazis believe this and it seems so insane it can't possibly be true but you know I, these were really insane people right and, and so and i kind of had to dive down to the depths of their insanity to try to make some sense of it and at the end of the day it didn't really make sense and um that's okay it's never going to make sense to someone like me or or probably you right um what these people actually thought but yeah many sleepless nights researching this this horrid stuff um i hope you enjoyed the video um i enjoyed making it for you guys um take care and have a good day